Welcome to Unrestrained, the podcast series from CPI. Here you can enjoy conversations where professionals on all sides of crisis and behavior management relax and open up about themselves, their workplace, and their clients. You'll get the latest tips and trends from the best in the business, so tune in often to integrate their experiences with your own. Hello and welcome to Unrestrained. I'm your host, Terry Vitone. I'm joined today by uh, CPI's Chief Marketing Officer, Marvin Mason. Hello, Marvin. Hello, Terry. And how are you? I'm well, thank you. And how are you? I'm doing super. All right, welcome. Thanks for doing our, our podcast today. If you could start today, uh, uh, Marvin, I know that people would probably like to hear a biographical sketch, a little bit about how you came up and your education and what brought you around to the livelihood you enjoy today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, you know, it really, for me, goes back to my college days. Um, in studying in, in college, I, I got my degree in public relations mm-hmm. uh, at Western Michigan University, and I uh, was really uh, taken by the program in, by one professor in particular who inspired me to pursue a career in corporate training. So I started at that point in my life saying, all right, corporate training professional is really what I want to do. So after college... Um, that's the kind of path I started to take. Um, while I was in college still, um, I met my to-be wife, and uh, she was studying occupational therapy. Uh, I was always, of course, impressed that she had a very focused degree that she was pursuing. So um, I had to become very focused to help you know, win her heart, too. So one of the things I did while I was in college was I got a job at a place called the Center for Developmentally Disabled Adults in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And uh, for me, it was a way to really show her that I cared about the space that she worked or was going to be working in. And so, um, but what it did to me, uh, the experience for me was just amazing. Uh, I went there afraid because, of course, I didn't go there for the reasons that others might go to, uh, to work in an environment like that. I went there to win a woman's heart elsewhere. Um, but really what happened for me is my heart was grabbed while I was there. Um, the first couple of days I was scared to death. Um, right. And I was scared because I felt, um, I wasn't scared of the residents there. I was mm-hmm. scared about me and how I would behave. Um, not knowing what to do and uh, never really having worked with that population. And I didn't want to do anything to, um, you know, to, to hurt anybody's feelings. But after a few days of being there, I really made connections with people. And, you know, that's really, really where it got my heart. Um, I saw past the disabilities and I made connections with people. And, and you know, that, that's where I really became to respect that people working in that profession really do a lot for our society in helping provide inclusion for folks. So very vivid memory for you, kind of a lights on kind of experience. It was. I always wondered too, like how that moment in my life, somewhere in its future, uh, where that experience would resurface. Um, mm-hmm. So as I said, I graduated from college and I went to work with Simon and Schuster Publishing in the Chicago area. They had a uh, an educational films division, so selling film strips and production of film strips for schools. That's back in the day of the, sure. the films. Um, the big move was to, to VHS um, and uh, corporate training. So for me, it was a good shaping experience because, you know, as a person fresh, fresh out of college, mm-hmm. I really got some great training and education for myself because I had to go through it in order to effectively sell and market it. Mm-hmm. Excellent. And now, how long are you at Simon & Schuster? I was there four years. Uh-huh. And how did, you, how did you find out about CPI? Well, you know, my career path uh, kind of drifted for a moment, um, it, but it, you know, frankly, it helped develop my marketing skills. Um, I left Simon & Schuster because the, it was a consolidation of uh, Simon & Schuster operations when they were bought out by Viacom mm-hmm. Communications, and they were moving the offices out east. And I was a Midwesterner, and, of course, I was engaged now and, and wanted mm-hmm. to uh, stay living in the Midwest, so I sought out another uh, job in marketing, but in a completely different industry. And for me, what it was, it was really then an opportunity to, to sharpen my skills as a marketer and mm-hmm. learn the kind of the full spectrum of what marketing is all about. Mm-hmm. But it really was um, 
a recruiter who called me about the opportunity at CPI that um, really helped me see the light. It, it, so? it, it was when I first heard about CPI, um, in fact, my father-in-law um, is, a, is a recruiter of CFOs, but he was a recruiter. Um, and when I told him what kind of organization I was considering, mm-hmm. his feedback to me was, Marv, you should probably stay away from that. That's an industry mm-hmm. that's not doing real well and is very vulnerable to movements in the economy. And so I was very cautious. Um, but the more I studied what CPI was doing and the impact, and you know, certainly you could do a lot of research on the internet mm-hmm. to discover all the positive impact it's having out there, um, I realized that this was it. This was my moment of that realization of what happened to me back in college when I had that experience. Because here was the perfect opportunity to marry up um, my past um, experience as wanting to be in in training industry, Mm because we're a training organization. It brought together my my interests with what my wife was doing, and certainly working here has helped bond our relationship, you know, 25 years later, even (laughs) stronger, because now we can talk about things and truly understand each other. Um, And certainly making working with an organization that's making an impact like it is, is Mm -hmm. very fulfilling. So um, this has just been a wonderful experience. To come full circle. Well, I feel like it's been full circle, yeah. That's that's a a great example of uh, a career path taking you to some place that your aptitude and your your heart is is in. Yeah, I think you're always prepared at Mm -hmm. different stages of your life for something in the Mm -hmm. future. It's just a matter of waiting to discover what that is. Now you come into CPI and, and you see Educate, Empower, Enrich. Was that in place when you came in or was that developed as you were here? It actually developed just shortly before I came here. Yeah, So I joined in the mid, uh, mid-2010 mid mm-hmm. and uh, we had just incorporated that as our tagline. And for me, the Educate, Empower, Enrich really can was an excellent choice. Can you talk about how you feel it embodies a CPI message? Absolutely. Uh, you know, in my mind, educate is you know, people enter the workforce really not prepared necessarily for the realities of what they're going to experience. And, you know, unfortunately in those situations, they come up very excited about what all they've learned and they want to apply it. And then they run into the behavior challenges. And then they get worn down because they're feeling ill-equipped in how to handle those situations. And as that keeps going on, um, you know, it, it, it kind of brings you down. Uh, for the reasons that you went into the profession, start to get lost. And I think the educate part of it is really about helping them understand human behavior, how, how to work with somebody to, in a way that you don't, in your own actions, cause a reaction that escalates the situation. So understanding yourself as much as really understanding anybody else. I think the behavior management really isn't about managing somebody else's behavior. It's about how to manage your own behavior. What a great perspective. Yeah. So I think that's the educate part. The empower is really when somebody somebody gets educated on techniques, not answers, but how to process the thinking, how, how how to come to the right way to address a situation based on that unique situation. Um, that's an empowerment that is powerful. And I, I think it gives somebody a, a sense of um, why they were there. What sort of challenges do you see out there fulfilling that message? It's a, it's a, it's a, well, it's a wonderful uh, goal. It sounds really good. How does it carry over into, into practicality? And, and well, cer- you- certainly one of the biggest challenges is, is yeah, helping somebody recognize um, that this really works. That if, if you could just slow down and not jump to your instincts and you could process this, you know, situ- a situation, you could process it with some kind of framework to apply to that, how you're processing mm-hmm. it, that the outcomes will actually be better. And, you know, the instincts, I think, are physical. How, how do I handle this in a physical way? Mm-hmm. And... And if you could slow it down and, and have the right training to adjust your instincts to process it differently, 
you know, the outcomes can be better. But that takes a high degree of confidence that, that this really works. And, and if you're faced in those day-to-day -day situations where um, you feel unsafe, you know, mm -hmm. chances are you're going to go to your instincts. So the training has to be there in place in a way that it becomes more of your instincts. And, and that's a leap of faith you've got to take. It's, all, it's in a form of empowerment. It is, once you get there. Right, instead of maybe going for that physical power, which is the first instinctual, I think, in, in a situation of some stress or duress. Um, yeah, I'd agree. But that empowerment then, it seems you're saying, that can be another, uh, uh, a more mental uh, kind of empowerment. And, uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's the enriched part then, mm -hmm. because it really helps mm -hmm. you feel better about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Now, as the as the uh, chief marketing officer here, how do you your mandate to spread this message? What are some of your strategies that that you're using for that? Well, I mean, certainly a message like ours isn't best told by me as a marketer. Mm -hmm. It's told by the people, um, mm -hmm. people, all the people who work at CPI, and all the people in um, in our different organizations that are utilizing CPI because it's, you know, as we were talking about, once you have the confidence that this works, you'll have a better chance of getting people to take the leap of faith that, you know, to go down the path mm -hmm. of understanding. And so we have a whole staff, you know, we're a couple hundred employees here um, who are very trained, very educated, um, come from practical experiences um, and, and they bring that uh, to the workplace. And, and if I can tap into those outlets and have them help connect people, because I think as a marketer, that's really all I'm doing, is putting people in connection with other people who can help each other. And whether you're a professional and you just need to be connected to somebody uh, else in, in a similar profession in mm -hmm. a, maybe a different location, I can help facilitate that, and that's going to help advance it. And uh, so, okay. And who specifically would you solicit to help with spreading that message? So. Well, as I said, the employees of the mm -hmm. organization. Um, it's why you see us write a lot of blogs. Mm -hmm. um, we do a lot of news stories, and it's, th th these are stories told from our employees. Mm -hmm. um, we have other outlets with um, uh, publications there where we have uh, the certified instructors. Um, tell their stories and we publish that and share it with other instructors um, that's another way to help facilitate connecting mm -hmm. people um, of course we have a, a certified instructor uh, website so it's a community we're intended to help connect people in a in a private mm -hmm. you know locked area of the CPI doors to tell that story mm -hmm. so um, it's all about tapping into people who've been through the training uh, and also doing this green to do this podcast will help spread the message as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, exactly. Because yeah, right. there's people are listening to different methods of uh, education, so it's how do you find that mm -hmm. right path? Mm -hmm. So say, say uh, you've got an organization that comes in and commits to CPI training. Um, if they're in the early stages of rolling out CPI, what what kind of message would you give to the the people who are responsible for bringing it in to make sure it succeeds? Well, you know, I think. Uh, you know, having been through the training myself mm -hmm. and talked to a lot of folks who have been through the training, mm -hmm. there is this sense of um, when, you, when you're going through certification training, you, you're really pretty excited at the end. Mm -hmm. And taking that energy and what you've learned um, and not being afraid um, to take that content and moving it forward mm -hmm. and delivering it with that same enthusiasm to everybody else on a consistent basis... Because, you know, if you're a trainer, you're going to train this many times. Mm -hmm. And to you, it's familiar. And you perhaps even get bored talking about it over and over. Mm -hmm. um, but your audience needs to hear it fresh again. So yeah, that, that's an important thing, I think, for organizations to consider is how they're delivering this needs to be impactful every time they deliver it. Mm -hmm. And, and my, my fear, of course, is that what happens is that the focus becomes too much on the physicals of the training. Mm -hmm. And it's, I, I know that happens because I talk with people. Uh, mm -hmm. It's pretty commonplace for any of the employees here to, to the, 
Okay, the Did physicals as opposed to just for people who might not know the, the yeah the physical restraints uh -huh. um, that that we teach. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, a lot of folks have equated CPI with physical restraints. Mm -hmm. um, but you know the, the interesting thing and so the frustrating thing is the marketer who's trying to help make sure that story is being told mm -hmm. well um, is that our emphasis is on de-escalation, mm -hmm. not the restraints. Right. Um, but unfortunately, so many are hearing this story that CPI equals restraint training. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a hard one to overcome, and it, right. I need a lot of help from, mm -hmm. from folks to, to help tell this a little differently. Mm -hmm. Do you have a, a particular example in your own experience where you have maybe felt uh, uh, somebody close to you uh, who, who was uh, acting, uh, acting out to a lesser or greater degree where you thought, hmm, I'm going to use a behavioral model? Well, certainly, I have kids, so um, it's it's funny because I hear a lot of folks who have been through the training say the same thing that you know you can apply these these uh, techniques to how you're communicating with anybody, and certainly with kids is a, is a great outlet. So yeah, it's certainly helped. Mm -hmm. um, it's helped me not overreact to my children because uh, I, I have a daughter who who had a tendency to to throw the rope to me, and uh, I was very aware to not pick up that rope. And the CPI principles came into play, I'm sure, for that, that presence of mind. Absolutely. That's a great example. But I mean, right. It, that... It's true, though, that my, my daughter, for example, and it's kind of funny looking back now because she's had a chance to intern here oh. over the summer. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I've referenced, you know, different terms at home that are CPI terms. Um, where you know, like the picking up the rope when she, when she is uh -huh. enga has engaged with me in a way that I think is throwing the rope to me, I would let her know that I'm not going to pick up the rope. <laughs> and so now that she's been here and saw the framework, I, I mentioned she's got her own a, a new set of understandings about how you may have managed behavior at home. Exactly. I mean, as we would drive home from work, um, we would talk about some of the terms that she would hear during her day mm -hmm. that she was familiar with because she heard me use them at home. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had fun talking about that. That's great. So it really has a practical meaning in your in your own family and even more of the full circle. Yeah. When you talk about yeah. it. All right. Is there any thought uh, that you'd like to leave our listening audience with today? Uh, you know, I, I think the biggest thing is, you know, we need to help people know that this training can have an impact. Um, we need to help them understand that the focus is de-escalation not the restraints. Um, certainly if restraints are needed, it's a last resort. Um, of course, listeners will certainly know and believe that themselves, but we need to help change the perception that CPI training is all about the restraint training because as you know, we've trained te over 10 million people now um, in the world on CPI. And if too many of them are starting to believe that it's restraint training, um, that's not really, um, you know, in line with what we believe our mission is. So, you know, I, I think it's about getting behind the full understanding of really what CPI and our philosophy is embracing. Excellent, excellent. Well, I want to thank you, Marvin. Marvin Mason, Chief Marketing Officer for CPI, uh, joined us today on Unrestrained. This is your host, Terry Vatone, thanking you for listening. Thank you, Marvin. Yeah, take care. All right. Thank you for joining us today on Unrestrained. Please tune in for our next episode in early October featuring Julie Herzog from Pacers National Bullying Prevention Center. Till then, this is your host, Terry Vatone, hoping your intention is prevention.